guys, Neurogal here. Today I'm going to talk about pot, otherwise known as marijuana, cannabis, Mary Jane, call it what you want. I'm going to review a recent debate that was hosted by Joe Rogan between a pro-marijuana advocate and an anti-marijuana crusader. Dr. Michael Hart is a family practitioner who practices medicine in Canada and is an avid pro-marijuana advocate and uses cannabis as therapy for a variety of disorders. Alex Berenson is an anti-marijuana crusader who is a novelist, a New York Times writer, who recently wrote a book detailing the harms of marijuana called Tell Your Children the Truth About Marijuana, Mental Illness, and Violence. As for me, I'm an MD. More specifically, I'm a neurologist and epileptologist who takes care of people with a variety of brain disorders, including strokes, dementia, seizures, and much more. I also happen to have studied endogenous cannabinoids in animal models during college, and I happen to prescribe cannabidiol, which is not synonymous with THC or cannabis, to help control seizures in some of my patients. I found the podcast to be super helpful in understanding some of the possible benefits and dangers of marijuana. Because of the ongoing public policy debates about legalization of marijuana, I think it's important that people have a balanced understanding about the reality of the effects of cannabis on the brain and the human body. And I think that this debate really pointed out the risks and the benefits pretty well. So this is not going to be an in-depth review of the debate. You can watch actual debate for that. There were three things, however, that I thought required clarification. These are the important distinction between schizophrenia and psychosis is not emphasized. Number two, does cannabis actually increase the risk of depression as noted by Alex Berenson? And number three, does cannabis use increase the risk for violence? This is a hot topic near the latter portion of the discussion. Let's cover the first topic. The statement that was published by the National Academies of Science, Engineering, and Medicine about the health effects of cannabis was discussed at length in the beginning of the discussion and Berenson uses it as a major platform in his book. The key point that is made from this publication is that cannabis is related to an increased risk of schizophrenia or psychoses. The distinction between schizophrenia and psychosis is not clearly emphasized or defined in the discussion. Berenson does briefly refer to it. I think it's really important to make the distinction a, a little clearer for the audience. I'm sure there are a lot of listeners who listen to the podcast and had a bad experience in the past with cannabis and now might be questioning whether or not they have schizophrenia when in actuality they may have had an acute bad reaction to cannabis. Schizophrenia is a chronic and severe mental disorder that often involves psychotic behavior. Psychosis, on the other hand, is a symptom, not an illness. Psychosis is often temporary and it involves a break from reality, which often involves hallucinations and delusions. Psychosis can be caused by a multitude of other things, not just schizophrenia, including infections, autoimmune conditions, other brain disorders such as brain tumors, dementia, seizures, intoxication with other substances. Marijuana intoxication can cause acute temporary psychosis, which does not necessarily mean that a person who has that has a diagnosis of schizophrenia. It's also really important to note that other substances can induce acute temporary psychosis. In fact, there's a diagnosis for it called substance-induced psychotic disorder. This is a temporary psychotic disorder caused by intoxication, and it can be caused by not only cannabis, but alcohol, opiates, stimulants such as methamphetamines. It would have been interesting to see how many people with acute psychosis actually convert to schizophrenia. I did find a study that compared the likelihood of transition from substance-induced psychotic disorder to schizophrenia. Subjects with substance-induced psychosis were greater than 77 times more likely than control subjects to convert to schizophrenia. People with cannabis-induced psychosis had an even greater chance to develop schizophrenia. They were 100 times more likely to ultimately develop schizophrenia. 
In summary, based on the scientific literature, people who smoke marijuana and who develop temporary psychosis, in other words, hallucinations or paranoid delusions, are at the highest risk for developing schizophrenia in the future if they continue to use cannabis. Another interesting fact before we move on to the next topic is that it seems that THC is the compound responsible for psychosis. In the discussion, Alex Berenson talks about the rising THC concentrations in marijuana strains over the past decades, which may be contributing to the rising rates of cannabis-related psychosis. Interestingly, cannabidiol, also known as CBD, has been shown to have strong antipsychotic effects. Moving on to the second topic, Berenson made reference to a study that was published on the same day of the debate, which linked the development of depression in people who used cannabis as adolescents. The Journal of the American Medical Association Psychiatry uh, put out a meta-analysis showing that cannabis is associated with depression uh, and suicidal thinking. We cannot draw conclusions from this study that cannabis use in adolescence causes depression later on in life. There are other factors, such as social media, which could be contributing to the development of depression in young people. A major limitation that was even discussed by the authors of this analysis is that data from the majority of the studies that they analyzed were not analyzed using causal inference methods. In other words, one cannot imply that early cannabis use causes depression uh, based on this article because of the statistical limitations. The third topic of discussion is the question about whether cannabis causes violence. Hart and Berenson argue about this later on in the discussion. They throw statistical references at each other and it ends up ultimately being confusing. Berenson argues that there are research studies that show that cannabis increases the risk for schizophrenia and psychosis, which in turn increases the risk of violence in people using cannabis. Cannabis causes paranoia and psychosis. So a distortion and in reality that could lead to you doing to something, something te terrible, and it's usually to somebody you're not actually fighting with. Mm -hmm. It's a family member. The, the worst cases that I've, and I've really seen a lot of these cases, are basically innocent family members who are just in the way when somebody loses touch with reality and literally thinks like this my 85 year old grandmother is going to kill me so i better stab her to death first if you look at the amount of violence that people with psychosis commit on a population level basis it looks like people with schizophrenia commit about six to ten percent of all the murders in this country and it looks like people with sort of broader def more broadly defined psychosis again bipolar with psychosis other psychotic conditions temporary psychosis they might be responsible for as much as 20 percent of the violent crime in the united states it is quite clear that drug use mediates that violent crime in other words if you're not using you can keep your impulses in check mm -hmm. but when you do use you become dangerous then heart retorts that cannabis is not associated with increased violence. When you do look at a lot of the larger data on, on cannabis and violence, I mean, it's just it's just not there. Think marijuana is causing homicides? Oh, yeah. This is what the book is about. There are studies that refute that. Like, there's multiple there, there studies. There are no studies that refute that paranoia and psychosis are huge risks for homicide. There's, there's a study here, and I just sent it to you, uh, Jamie, and it's, it's titled um, Risk Factors for Violence and Psychosis, a Systemic Review and Meta-Analysis of 110 Studies. It was unclear if there was an association between violence and a history of cannabis misuse. The conversation just becomes confusing, so I decided to look into the data myself, and based on my review of the literature, it seems that cannabis use is associated with an increased risk of violent behavior in those who are predisposed to it. In other words, people who are acutely psychotic or have mental illness, such as schizophrenia or bipolar disorder. Therefore, just as Joe points out in the video, for certain people who are predisposed, cannabis can increase the risk for violent behavior. But this risk should not be applied to all individuals. Overall, I thought the talk was informative. It brought up good points. Was there a winner of the debate? In my opinion, neither Dr. Hart nor Berenson really won the debate. Both, for the most part, effectively communicated their opinion and backed their opinions with evidence. I want to make it clear that in this video, I am not advocating for or against the legalization of marijuana in the U.S. 
I lean towards libertarian values. In other words, I think that adults should be able to make their own decisions as long as it doesn't harm other people. That's a wrap, folks. If you like the video, go ahead and hit that like button. I really appreciate it. Please make sure to subscribe to my channel for more tips on brain health and brain optimization techniques. We'll catch you next time.